Okay, hello. Uh, good morning. So now we are starting the set of international talks of the e-micro of this year. So from now, uh, all the international talks will be done in English. So you can see the program that uh, we have also this afternoon and tomorrow some also other very interesting talks. Uh, so now it's time to start so our first uh, uh, international talk in this edition so uh, we have uh, now about uh, uh, almost uh, 1100 uh, participants in this event so much more than when it's a face-to-face -face one so it's a uh, good news and uh, we are very happy here to to have an excellent uh, presentation that uh, will be done by Guillaume Ferrer from Bordeaux, directly from Bordeaux, France. So there is uh, more five hours. So he is in the afternoon, we are still in the morning. And uh, this session will be chaired by Roberto Murphy from Inaue uh, in Puebla. So uh, he has two hours less than here. It's a pity that his camera is not connected, but you can listen the, the voice of uh, Roberto that will do the chair of this uh, session. So thank you very much for to Roberto and to Guillaume to accept our invitation. And uh, so I give the word to Roberto to start the session. Hello, thank you very much. Yes, it's a pity we don't have a, my camera is not working. This is a great opportunity to try new technology due to the pandemia and we should take advantage of it with this fantastic talk and novel approach to process the multiple reception of non-orthogonal LoRa-like signals by Guillem Ferré from Bordeaux. So Guillem, please uh, okay. take the floor. Okay, thank you Roberto and thank you also Ricardo uh, to invite me to give a talk um, in this uh, conference. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, as Roberto said, my name is uh, Guillaume Ferré. Um, so I'm from Bordeaux University in France, in the southwest of, of France. Um, my research uh, activities are on uh, signal processing for uh, digital communication. Uh, and mainly uh, on the IoT, uh, Internet of Things uh, system. Uh, and today uh, I will present you uh, a recent work uh, on um, that deals with uh, interference uh, uh, in IoT system that use uh, low high like uh, signals. So the, the title uh, is the following, a novel approach to process the multiple reception of non-orthogonal LoRa-like signals. Uh, so, okay. uh, the outline of my presentation uh, is the following. So first of all, uh, an introduction to uh, give you uh, the context uh, and the problematic. Uh, then I will develop the system model that that will be considered, um, and then um, I will uh, show you the reason that we propose to solve the interference problem uh, due to the non-orthogonality between the received signals. Um, and before conclusion, uh, I will show you uh, some simulation results uh, and also some some uh, real-time uh, processing uh, based on uh, software-defined uh, radio. So uh, here is the, the, the system model that we consider. So we consider a communication system, um, uh, more precisely an uplink uh, communication system. Uplink means it's a communication uh, between uh, from the node to the gateway. So uh, a node is a connected connected object. In in fact, in IoT, 
So it could be a house, a car, a shoes, and so on and so on. And this node uh, or user uh, transmit an information uh, to a getaway. Um, so uh, here we have capital U node uh, that are able to transmit an information uh, to a getaway. So this information could be a temperature, a humidity, uh, an alarm, uh, and so on and so on. So uh, you have to know that uh, when you consider an IoT communication system, uh, in fact, there is two um, families. The, the first one use uh, licensed bandwidth. So it means that um, when you want to use uh, frequency bandwidth to communicate, uh, generally, this bandwidth uh, is allocated by a scheduler and there will be no interference problem. Uh, and the other uh, is um, the, the, the system that use free bandwidth, um, mainly the ISM bandwidth for uh, industrial, scientific, and medical. And uh, these uh, bandwidth are free to use. It means that there is no uh, scheduler to um, uh, to take care uh, about um, potential interference uh, between nodes. Uh, and um, okay, a node uh, is able to listen the channel before transmission, uh, and he used uh, for that the LBT uh, protocol for listen before talk. Uh, but due to uh, some energy constraints uh, when uh, we consider an IoT communication system, uh, especially from the node point of view, uh, the node uh, do not take time to listen the channel uh, to waste energy. So when the node wants to transmit an information, it transmits the information. It transmits when it wants. So uh, we have a random access channel uh, communication and due to this random access channel, uh, in fact, in fact, we can have uh, some interference uh, when two nodes or a lot of nodes uh, transmit uh, at the same time and on the same uh, frequency. So this is the problem that the, that we consider. We consider uh, that uh, at the getaway. Uh, we can receive uh, multiple uh, information from multiple nodes at the same time and uh, at the same frequency. Okay, so um, we propose uh, to process a collision between a U LoRa node simultaneously received uh, with the same spreading factor. Uh, and uh, I will uh, explain to you what means spring factor. Uh, and uh, to process this collision, um, we will uh, use uh, successive interference cancellation algorithm uh, based uh, on the, uh, the signal that we received. So, uh, when you perform a uh, communication you re using LoRa, so LoRa uh, means uh, is the contraction of long range communication. So uh, LoRa, um, uh, there is some parameters and uh, an important parameter in LoRa is the spreading factor. So the spreading factor uh, is between uh, seven and 12. And um, when the spreading factor is low, it means that you can you have a high data rate, but a short range. And when the spreading factor is high, you have a long range, but a short uh, data rate. Um, the bandwidth uh, is about, uh, generally, the main use bandwidth is equal to uh, 125 uh, kilohertz. Uh, and in this bandwidth, when uh, you use a spreading factor equal to 12, so the, the, the most uh, important spreading factor, 
uh, you are able to communicate at a distance of approximately uh, 20 kilometers uh, in terrestrial communication. Um, but from a link budget point of view, you can reach uh, 1,000 kilometers. And there is some uh, uh, world uh, record of communication. And then the, the last one is a record of communication uh, with a range of uh, 830 uh, kilometers. Uh, okay. So um, let's go uh, on the modulation uh, technique used in uh, LoRa. So LoRa use a uh, chirp spread spectrum uh, modulation to transmit data. So it means that the information is coded on the chirp uh, and to transmit uh, different information, we transmit different chirp trajectory based on a rotation of chirp. So uh, uh, the digital modulation works uh, as follows. Uh, here you have um, uh, the chirp. So on the horizontal axis, this is the time. And on the vertical uh, axis, this is the bandwidth. Um, the chirp has a duration of capital T. And the bandwidth is equal to B. So this chirp, the chirp A, uh, is called the route chirp of communication, of the communication. And based on this chirp, we generate uh, all the uh, other chirp that transmit the information. So how it works, if I want to transmit uh, a, an information, uh, a symbol of information gamma E of P, so gamma uh, is for the symbol, E is for the user, and P is for the, the time. So it means that it corresponds to the trans to the symbol transmitted by the user high at time p. So uh, gamma i of p uh, is on the range zero to um, two power of sf minus one, um, and this value uh, is obtained based on a binary to decimal conversion uh, of the bit stream of sf bit. So when we have this value, we can delay or advance the chirp. And in this example, uh, we uh, advance the chirp of this quantity. And as you can see, the part of the chirp outside the range uh, minus t over 2 plus t over 2 is cyclically repeated, repeated uh, at the end of the time. So this is the cyclical. Uh, operation of the ch chirp spread spectrum communication. And the chirp trajectory that corresponds to the transmission of this information is this uh, chirp uh, trajectory. So it starts from here, the frequency increase until this point, and then it, it will start from here to here. And it corresponds to the information of uh, one chirp for for the user high at time p. Okay, so this process is repeated uh, until the end of the bit stream, um, and then uh, you obtain uh, a concatenation of all the chirp uh, transmitted on the channel. So when you have uh, multiple nodes that transmit information at the same time, you will have a collision of this chirp uh, at the receiver. And we uh, propose an algorithm to extract the information uh, despite the collision. So uh, to be more clear, let me uh, give you uh, an example. Uh, 
So if I consider, let me try this. If I consider this bit stream, so zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Let me consider this bit stream. Uh, SF, the spreading factor of the communication. Equal to two, so it's for, it's for the example. So as I told you, the spring factor starts from seven and sometimes to six to 12. But for the example, let me consider just a spring factor equal to two. So when the spring, spring factor is equal to two, if I have this bit stream at the input of my chirp spread spectrum uh, modulation, uh, the system will collect the bits two by two. So we look to the first two bits, then to this one, then to this one, then to this one, and so on until the end of the bit stream. Okay. To each value, we compute the binary to uh, decimal conversion. So uh, if I use a binary uh, encoding uh, here, uh, zero one with uh, the most significant bit on the right, it corresponds to a one. Here it is two. Here it is one. Here it is two. So let me finish here to have a couple of bits. Okay, so here it is three. So based on this value, um, the system will, um, the chirp spread spectrum will delay the how chirp of all this quantity. So with SF equal to, it means that we have four, four possible combinations, two, four, or two. So it means that we have to generate four different uh, trajectory, uh, chirp tra trajectory. So based on this, we will generate uh, 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 all the different trajectory uh, by using the, the method that I explained. So here, uh, if we have four possible trajectory, the, the, the time, time from minus TS, minus T, divided by two and plus t divided by two is divided in four parts. Four parts. Uh, so for zero, there is no, no shift. So with the gamma i of P is gamma i of p is equal to zero. For one, this is the shift of the chop for one. This is the shift of the chirp for two. And this is the shift of the chirp for three. So, and based on the cyclical process, we are able to generate four different trajectory, the raw one, then a trajectory with this delay, another one with this delay, and with this delay, okay? And then the chop has put it, um, uh, the, the all, uh, 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 all along the, uh, the communication, okay. So here is the mathematical uh, explanation of uh, the, the, the process that I described before. 
So, uh, yeah, sorry, there is no 2C. The modulated chirp uh, related to symbol transmitted at time PTS uh, is uh, defined by two functions, uh, two uh, uh, very uh, simple functions. As you can see, we have this function and this function. So, okay, so this one and this one. So, is it, each chirp uh, are defined with two uh, different equations. So this is these two equation, the first one and the second one. So this equation is when the time is between minus t divided by two and minus t divided by two plus gamma p, gamma p correspond. The gamma p is in fact, uh, sorry, there is a mistake here on the notation. Gamma uh, p is the same as gamma e of p. So it corresponds to the uh, symbol transmitted by the user high at time p and it's a random variable uh, between the set uh, inside the set z uh, 0 2 to the power of sf uh, minus 1 so in the previous example when i consider sf uh, equal to 2 uh, the random variable gamma i of p uh, is um, it is uh, the, the, the the interval uh, the value uh, that uh, can be uh, taken by, by gamma i of p are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So gamma i of p is randomly distributed uh, in this uh, interval. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the distribution is, the, uh, is a uniform distribution because the, the bits are generally uh, uniformly distributed. Uh, and the, 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 the value of gamma p uh, is obtained uh, by computing the ratio of m of p and b, uh, where m of p is between, uh, is, is, is inside this uh, set of values. So sorry, gamma e of p uh, is a random variable, um, but it's a random variable divided by b uh and not, not and not just uh, zero to uh two power of sf minus one minus minus one as it is uh, uh, written here so based on, on this uh the complex envelope of the transmitted signal so the the, the signal uh, that is uh, that will be transmitted on the channel just before the RF uh, part of the transmitter uh, is as follows. So for the user high, uh, we note S i of t, the complex envelope of the transmitted signal. And it is just a concatenation of uh, different exponential uh, with uh, uh, different uh, uh, phase trajectory uh, here, phi high of t minus pts. So it's a concatenation uh, of uh, a different uh, chirp. So let me show you uh, uh, an example of this. So if I consider uh, the transmission of port chirp, this is the, the different chirp in time. Here it's, it is the frequency, the range, which is B. So this is B. So this is T, the symbol time, 2T, 3T. So if I consider that I, uh, I transmit uh, uh, an unmodulated uh, chirp, I mean I transmit all the time the value uh, zero, so it corresponds to the binary combination of SF bits equal to zero, okay? So the different chirp that will be transmitted will be as follows. So it takes time, sorry, to, to draw. 
but I think it's more clear. It's more easier to understand. So let's consider that uh, I transmit uh, four eighteen chirps. So the trajectory of the, the different chirp will be as follows, and it corresponds to this equation, where the first four bits, uh, for SF bits, sorry are equal to zero. So it's a concatenation of an exponential with this uh, trajectory. Uh, remember that the link between the frequency and the phase uh, is the following. Here, uh, n of high uh, corresponds to the number of symbols transmitted by uh, the uh, LoRa node high. So if we use uh, a spreading factor equal to uh, 10 as an example, and if n of i is equal to 10, it means that we transmit 10 by 10, uh, so uh, 100 of bits. OK, so this is the, uh, the, the equation of the transmitting signal at each node. So here uh, is an example of a spectrogram uh, of a LoRa frame uh, obtained by a recording of real data uh, in our, our laboratory. So um, uh, as all the uh, digital communication uh, system, uh, when you want to retrieve the uh, bits transmitted by a signal, you are first to uh, synchronize the signal in time, uh, possibly in frequency, and you have to equalize the channel if this hand is uh, frequency selective. So uh, when you consider uh, a LoRa an, or an IoT uh, communication system, uh, generally the channel uh, is uh, non-frequency selective. So we just have to perform time and frequency synchronization. So to perform uh, the, the uh, across uh, time synchronization of the signal, uh, you have a preamble, which is composed of uh, a couple of unmodulated chirps. So here you have a first chirp, which is not unmodulated, another one, another one, another one, until here. Then here you have a special uh, parameter, which is the sync word in LoRa. Here you have uh, another parameter, which corresponds to the start frame deliminator, uh, which, which corresponds to uh, a chirp with an opposite uh, trajectory. And then, you have here the symbols. So as you can see, uh, it's not uh, uh, all the time uh, an unmodulated chirp as in the preamble, because here you have transmission of information. So it corresponds to different trajectory of chirp. OK. So. Uh, to detect, synchronize, and also decode the like signal, uh, the gateway has to be all the time uh, in the uh, listening status. So it means that the gateway record all the time uh, information uh, in on block. So you have a channel that that listen uh, bandwidth and uh, sample this bandwidth. Then. Uh, to demodulate uh, a LoRa lag signal or a chirp signal, it, there is a different receiver that exists in literature. Uh, but but the, 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 the receiver that allows to reach the uh, uh, more better sensitivity is based on a, a frequency processing. Uh, and this frequency processing uh, is composed of two main steps. The first step, um, uh, consists of multiplying the receive signal by a train of down chirp 
so uh, a, a complex conjugate of the chirp uh, transmitted of the how chirp and it corresponds to the dead chirping operation and when this dead chirping operation uh, is performed the receiver uh, perform a, a FFT uh, on uh, on a window we we, we uh, which had and uh, which has and the time uh, duration equivalent to the symbol time. So uh, if we give a mathematical definition of uh, the day chopping sequence, sample at Ts equal to T divided by M, so it's a very particular, uh, a, a very particular uh, pr uh, sampling as in UFDM, uh, if you are familiar with orthogonal frequency division, uh, multiplexing, we have uh, uh, an orthogonality at precise sampling time. Uh, here it's the same, in fact. We sample the signal uh, at a rate equal to m divided by t, the sample time. To perform this uh, signal, d uh, n t s, uh, which is a concatenation of whole chirp uh, conjugate. So this signal is in fact composed of this kind of chirp, like this. So you have the opposite chirp uh, compared to the chirp used for the transmission and to generate the different symbol trajectory. So, uh, if now we look on the mathematical expression of the receive signal at the getaway, uh, if we consider that uh, capital U user are in collision. So a collision means a different signal received at the same time and on the same frequency. And the collision uh, uh, could be uh, destructive or not. So here, uh, Y of NTS uh, correspond to the signal uh, at the output of the uh, analog to digital converter at the receiver. Uh, same, 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 the, the signal sample at TS. And it's a collection of uh, capital U signal, uh, S of I, received with a power of P of I. So as P of I is the power, you have to take the square root of this quantity uh, to express as the signal in the signal domain. Uh, here, delta and I correspond to the time arrival of the signal. Multiply by this exponential. This exponential is here to um, uh, highlight the fact that, that the uh, frequency there is a frequency shift between the receiver uh, and the transmitter due to the difference between the local oscillator and uh, and or due to the doppler effect if it exists a relative speed between the receiver and the transmitter and w of n uh, correspond to uh, the noise so as i told you pi is the power Theta high is an initial phase, and delta fi correspond to the frequency desynchronization of the E receive signal. W of n is the, the noise, so here we consider, and it's classical uh, because it's the thermal noise of the receiver, uh, which has this kind of uh, distribution, that the noise is uh, additive, uh, white Gaussian, and also Gaussian. Uh, Sigma B square, it's onto its variance. And uh, it's because we adopt a complex uh, based on a complex uh, representation of our signal. Uh, but if you are not familiar uh, with this uh, representation, you can you can consider separately the in phase and the quadrature phase uh, of the receiver to process not a scalar, a complex scalar quantity but a vector uh, of two dimension. And the time desynchronization, delta ni, uh, could be viewed 
uh, as the summation of two terms, an, integ uh, an integer part of capital M, so an integer part of uh, the, the, the symbol time, capital K of A, plus tau I, and tau I uh, correspond to uh, the fractional part of the uh, time desynchronization, uh, which is supposed uniformly distributed uh, between zero and M, uh, which is uh, uh, classical uh, and also a, a, a realistic uh, assumption. Okay, so this is the mathe mathematical model of the receive signal. So as I told you, S of I, S I of N is the transmitted signal. Okay, it takes time to arrive at the receiver, so it is due. Uh, it is the, the the fact of this quantity due to frequency mismatch between the receiver and the transmitter you have this quantity and also different phase it's normal because uh, we, we don't have generally a, a, a phase alignment between the receiver and the transmitter uh, and you have a superposition of all these signals okay so uh uh, this quantity uh, y of n so for uh, simplicity i suppress uh, capital t s uh, on the equation so this uh, uh, this quantity uh, y of n so let's consider that here it corresponds to the buffer that store all the sample at the gateway so this buffer is divided into part, okay, so like this. So the first part is composed of M samples. Let me remind you that here M is equivalent, is the discrete equivalent of the time T, which is the sample time, okay? So here it's time T, so here it's M, here it's 2m until the buffer, which is here, okay? So uh, we divide the buffer into this quantity, um, and uh, we are looking to, for example, this beginning, which, which correspond to the beginning of uh, the, the, the is uh, uh, the risk receive signal. So here, delta n i is is correspond to this quantity. Is delta n i, and capital K of i is equal to one, two, three. Okay, three times m, n two is equal to this quantity. Okay, and as you can see, two is between zero and m uh, minus one. So uh, y n of p correspond to the piece block uh, to the piece blocks uh, of the receive vector. So here is the the first block, the, the second block, the third block, and so on and so on. So y n of p correspond to the, the piece block. So let's consider that this is the piece block between P minus one times R and P times M. Okay, so it's this quantity correspond to this value. So as I told you, each uh, part of the signal of duration t is dechirped, so here it corresponds to the dechirping sequence. And then we perform a FFTs, and as you can see here, it corresponds to an FFT of this quantity, the dechirping of the receive signal. So we form this quantity which corresponds to the fast Fourier transform of the dechirping sequence. And the dechopping sequence will be noted Zn of p in the following. 
So uh, if we look to the day chopping sequence of the PACE uh, block of data, it is composed pro, uh, potentially of uh, U, it is composed potentially of U uh, signal, but here we consider that we have UP uh, collision uh, at P, okay? So UP uh, is lower than capital U, lower of or equal to uh, capital U plus the noise. So uh, the dechirping uh, sequence uh, of the, 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 the UP uh, signal, in fact, correspond to the summation of two uh, sinus uh, cardinal function uh, between zero and tau i and tau i plus one to m minus one. And these two uh, sinus cardinal function are uh, respectively at this normalized frequency and at this normalized frequency for uh, the user high, so where mi of pi minus one and mi of p uh, is a random variable which corresponds to the summation of the signal that you want to retrieve. So this is the information that you want. Here it corresponds to the time desynchronization, and here it corresponds to the frequency uh, desynchronization. So it means that uh, uh, despite uh, the, the, the collision, if there is no uh, time and frequency synchronization to suppress this random quantity and this random quantity, you are unable to uh, retrieve correctly the information here, okay? So the first uh, things to do is uh, to be able to synchronize the signal in time and in frequency. So we develop some approach uh, to uh, synchronize uh, the, the signal in time and in a frequency. And here you have a, a schematic view uh, of the uh, global algorithm that we have developed. So here the getaway is in listening status. When the getaway detects a Lorelei-like signal and the buffer, it starts uh, a time and frequency synchronization on the strongest signals. So it look uh, for the uh, strongest, strongest signal all along the buffer of data. Then we decode the strongest signal. We reconstruct the, the strongest signals. So it means that based on the symbol that we decode, we reconstruct the chirp and we remove this chirp on the receive signals, okay? And it is possible to have some superposed uh, peaks on the FFT due to uh, the random nature of the transmitted symbol and the collision. And this operation is repeated uh, uh, until there is no detecting LoRa-like signal on the buffer. Okay, so to perform the synchronization, we have developed a coarse and a fine synchronization approach. So the first, uh, and, and, and the, coarse, uh, the coarse and fine synchronization uh, approach are based on the, the structure of the transmitted Lorelac signal, uh, uh, based on, uh, that we that we that we know based on the uh, real uh, record of uh, LoRa like signal that we perform at the laboratory. So uh, a LoRa preamble consists of n pair out chirp. So we look on this uh, n pair out chirp uh, on the on the on the received signal. So it could be viewed as an intercorrelation between the the, the this chirp and the uh, receive the buffer and as the chirp are unmodulated uh, on the preamble it means that the the the, the direct or the sinus cardinal are exactly at the at the summation of the air the the, the time the, the the time synchronization and the frequency desynchronization so it means that 
when we detect, uh, based on the preamble, the arrival of the strongest signal, we are in fact a quantity which is equal to the summation of these two uh, quantity. And as you can see, uh, we have to be careful with the, this summation because if this summation is uh, greater than M, uh, we will, there is some ambiguity to solve this problem and it's more complicated to solve. So we suppose that the summation of this quantity is lower than M and this modulo or this modulo operation uh, comes from the FFT uh, periodic nature uh, of this uh, algorithm. So when we have uh, detected this strongest signal, we are able to have this information. So here, I give you uh, 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 a view of what happened when three uh, signals are in collision, um, three nodes, and when we uh, are synchronized on the strongest one. So when we are synchronized on the strongest one, we just have one pix on the FFT, and the two other LoRa-like signal are not synchronized. So it means that we are in between two symbols that correspond to two sinus cardinal for the first uh, uh, for another uh, nodes and two other sinus cardinal for the other one. So it corresponds to uh, the, the 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 FFT of uh, the, 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 the received signal synchronized on the strongest signal. And as you can see, uh, you, you have an, uh, an explanation of, of why we start from the strongest signal, because the strongest signal we will have, we'll have uh, the, the, the higher peak on the FFT. So your algorithm consists of looking on the maximum value to decode the information carried by this uh, strongest one signal. So when we are uh, synchronized, uh, the strongest signal. Uh, so uh, we 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 perform um, a binary hypothesis test uh, to be able to synchronize uh, to detect uh, the, the 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 preamble of lora like signal. So here you have a function that is constructed. Uh, based on Y uh, key of G, which correspond to a different uh, FFT, divided by here the, uh, the square root of the variance of the noise. So we suppose that we are able to estimate this value on silence period uh, of, the, of, the, of the signals. And here, this uh, signal in fact, correspond to uh, the, 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 the each peaks correspond to the time arrival of uh, four uh, different nodes in collision. So here is the strongest one. So the alg our algorithm will, will start to decode this signal, then suppress this signal, then decode this one, suppress this signal, then this one, suppress this one, and then decode this one. So the fine synchronization is based on the start frame uh, delimiter. delimiter. Uh, so um, uh, based on this, we are able to reconstruct uh, another equation uh, with uh, two unknowns. Uh, and these two unknowns are uh, the, the, the T uh, to S and delta FS, which correspond to the time and frequency the synchronization of the signal. So based on uh, the, the, the coarse synchronization and the fine synchronization, we are able to construct uh, two equations with, with two unknowns, and we are able to um, uh, estimate uh, uh, uniquely this value and this value. Okay, so when we are synchronized on the, the, the strongest signal, the demodulation of this strongest signal is composed of three quantity. Here, it corresponds to the signal that we want to demodulate. So it's a direct function at the position of the symbol that we want. Okay, so if it's the strongest signal, 
Uh, if we look for the maximum value of this quantity, we will uh, able to uh, estimate this value. Here, it corresponds to the inter-symbol interference due to, to the other user receive at the same time. And here, is the, it corresponds to the FFT of the noise. So as I told you, the estimation of the uh, symbol uh, transmitted by the strongest signal, the, the PACE symbol, is uh, performed uh, by looking to the R max value uh, of uh, this quantity here s is not on the exponent but in index to be coherent with this uh, notation so when all the symbols are estimated uh, we also uh, we we suppress uh, the, the, the 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 this uh, information um, on the on the receive signal here z n of p the the dead sharp sequence so it's the original dead sharp sequence and we suppress the original dead sharp sequence by all the symbols uh, that have been estimated previously so here we estimate this uh, quantity which uh, carried the binary information by the strongest signal we also need to estimate the phase the initial phase of the signal and also the uh, the power because here uh, uh, it's like if we want to uh, to suppress a cosine in a signal in as you as you know if you want to suppress a cosine uh, you have to uh, if you have a cosine 2 pi f0 t and if you want to uh, uh, su subtract the quantity to obtain zero uh, you must have you 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 will uh, suppress this cosine with the same value so it means that you have the same uh, magnitude the same phase and the same frequency so we are it is necessary to estimate the magnitude of the signal and the, the initial phase to be able to suppress correctly the information of the on the on the signal okay and then we repeat uh, the the operation um, until the system uh, the our algorithm uh, do not detect uh, a LoRa like signal uh, um, on the buffer. Uh, we are we, we we need to be careful with uh, an uh, uh, with a, a fact that uh, uh, in fact when you demodulate LoRa like LoRa like signal, uh, you are looking on um, a, a peak. Uh, uh, on uh, uh, FFT, and it is possible to have superimposed peak uh, due to the uh, random uh, uh, behavior of the uh, symbols, but also the random behavior of the time and frequency, the synchronization. So uh, it is necessary to detect a possible uh, superimposed peak because if uh, you do not detect this kind of uh, problems, you will suppress uh, the signal, not just for the strongest signal, but for another signal, which is in superposition. So we develop a method uh, to uh, look at this. Okay, so let me uh, give you some uh, simulation results, uh, and then I will uh, conclude. So, uh, uh, the signal to noise ratio uh, is defined as follows so it is uh, equal to the um, ratio between the power of the user high divided by the variance of the noise and we define another parameter uh, which is the power ratio peer uh, which corresponds to the difference uh, between the uh, power of the different user and we consider that uh, the power ratio, so the difference of power between the different uh, nodes, uh, is constant all along the demodulation. Uh, so it's the simulation parameter. We consider a bandwidth of uh, this value in kilohertz, a spreading factor of 12, a frame length uh, equal to uh, 80 uh, times the symbol time. So it means that we have uh, 80 symbols uh, on the uh, on the on the frame. Uh, the block length correspond to the length of the buffer, uh, so it's it is equal to uh, 200 uh, symbol time. 
we consider a preamble length of eight unmodulated chirp and three uh, superposed um, uh, signals. So uh, some uh, results, uh, so simulation results of our algorithm uh, uh, to detect the effective start of the receive the frame. So um, on the vertical axis, it corresponds to the signal to noise ratio and uh, horizontal axis, sorry. And on the vertical axis, it is the detection probability uh, of a frame uh, of uh, a lower light -like signal in collision. And as you can see, uh, the black curve correspond to uh, the, the, the probability of detection was the, when, when there is no collision. And, and then you have the different probability of detection based on a different uh, collision. Here it is when the power ratio between the strongest signal and the other one is equal to 6 dB. Here it is equal, uh, it corresponds to um, the, 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 fa the fact that uh, when the power ratio is equal to 3 dB. So we have, the, we are very close. In fact, our algorithm of detection are very close uh, to the, the algorithm where when there is no uh, interference. Okay, uh, so here we you have um, a, a, a spectrogram uh, of uh, a receive signal at the gateway before, so on the left hand side, uh, before the, 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 the processing, our processing uh, algorithm, are processing, um, uh, okay. Uh, as you can see here, uh, here this uh, vertical uh, draw correspond to the preamble. So you can see here three uh, packets in collision, so three preamble, and then it correspond to the symbols. And after two uh, iteration, so the, the decoding of the, of the first strongest signal, the separation, the decoding on the, on the next strong, strongest signal and the separation of this, um, of this uh, uh, user, we obtain this spectrogram. So as you can see, uh, there is just one preamble. So it means that the, 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 the two uh, other signal have been correctly uh, suppressed. So it corresponds to uh, simulation uh, results. Okay. Uh, here, uh, it's uh, the, the uh, evolution of the bit error rate uh, with a power ratio of 6 dB on the left hand side and with 3 dB on the right hand side. On the left hand side, the black curve. Uh, correspond to the performance of the system without interference. The blue one is the performance of uh, when we decode the strongest signal. So there is a, a, a little shift uh, due to the uh, to, due to due to the def, uh, symbol interference, and then you have the, uh, the different uh, decoding for the diff the other user. You can see uh, such a flow which is due to the uh, residual uh, inter-symbol interference uh, due to the uh, non-correctly suppression of the different user. So it's on the left, it corresponds to the results when the power ratio is equal to uh, 6 dB, and on the right, when the power ratio is equal to 3 dB. So the, the, resu the results uh, are uh, better when the power ratio is equal to 6 dB. Uh, because uh, the, 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 due to uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the power diversity is better. Okay. So then we decide to validate our simulation results on a real uh, LoRa communication. And here, let me show you uh, the, 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 the setup that we consider. So we we use a gateway uh, based on a uh, USRP, a software-defined radio. So here it's the, the gateway. So for those of you that are familiar uh, with uh, software-defined radio here, we use a B100 USRP. 
And then we use uh, three uh, homemade uh, nodes uh, with two uh, ST, uh, STM32 uh, cards and here with an Arduino uh, card. And uh, here the three antennas. We, uh, we, we, we set up the, the communication to have a power ratio between the different nodes equal to uh, 6 dB. We transmit with uh, different uh, time interval in order to generate collision. And here, uh, it corresponds to a result of uh, a synchronization of the, on the strongest signal. So as you can see, we are correctly synchronized on the strongest signal and the two, the four peaks correspond to the, uh, the two couple of uh, uh, sinus cardinal of the other signal unsynchronized. And then after the decoding and suppression of the strongest signal, we are able to reduce the power uh, of the strongest signal to here uh, 28 dB. Uh, and based on this, we are able in the next round to decode uh, correctly the, the new uh, strongest signal that will be probably the signal uh, that corresponds to these two uh, sinus, uh, sinus cardinal uh, peaks. And as you can see uh, here, when we are synchronized on the two, uh, on the, the, the true strongest signal, we are at uh, 7 dB uh, from the, 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 the power of the first strongest signal, which is very close to the power ratio that we fix uh, for the uh, communication. Okay, so as a conclusion, uh, we, try to propose an algorithm to solve uh, a huge problems uh, in IoT uh, communication system that use uh, free bandwidth. So this problem is the collision. Uh, so to perform, uh, uh, to, to, to have an algorithm that perform well, we need to develop a high efficient uh, synchronization algorithm. Uh, some errors are, are introduced uh, due to the SIC algorithm, but the performance are very good and uh, we are actually able to uh, demodulate uh, 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 more than uh, two or three uh, packets, whereas the, the, the actual getaway are not able to demodulate uh, any signal when there is a destructive collision. Uh, and uh, our algorithms are uh, uh, currently uh, implemented uh, on a commercialized uh, LoRa uh, chip. Okay, so thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, so here it's my email. So if you have questions, if you are interested uh, to work on this, uh, you have to know that uh, there is some position in my research team uh, to work on these uh, topics. Uh, and more generally, uh, uh, I have some put, some open position uh, on the, the field of uh, signal processing and digital communication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a very nice talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Where well, I can see the question? I cannot see any questions right now. In, in the in the YouTube channel, there is some questions. Ah, okay. So, uh, there is a question by Clovis Ricardo Figenbaum. I don't know if you are able to to see Roberto. I have the YouTube page, but I cannot see a question. Yeah, it's uh, it was done uh, by Clovis. So it's uh, how high can be the noise interference? In the transmission, in the case of maximum range of 20 kilometers due to the bad weather conditions. Can you repeat, Ricardo? Uh, how high can be the noise interference, the transmission, in the case of maximum range of 20 kilometers due to bad weather conditions? Um, Habla en unos minutos, por favor, estoy en la reunión. Gracias. 
I'm, I'm not sure to, to clearly understand the question. So uh, if I understand well, you, 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 you told that uh, I, I consider a range of communication equal to 20 kilometers and bad condition, bad, bad, bad weather. And then it means that the receive signal will have a, 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 a very low power. Or uh, it means that we are close to uh, the sensitivity of the receiver. And if we are if we are on the sensitivity of the receiver, we are able to decode this signal. Um, but if there is some uh, interference, so if you have the same mathematical model as the mathematical model that I explained uh, previously, uh, if this signal is the strongest one, it will be considered as the strongest one and decode the first one. And if the, the second one, it will be decoded in the, the, in the second position and so on and so on. OK, we have to see if that answers the question. Are there any more questions? The, the, the questions can also be done in Portuguese, Spanish, French. <laughs> then uh, you have to translate. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's in Portuguese or Spanish, we can translate. Uh, if it's in French, it's your natural language. So. Yeah. So don't be ashamed to put questions. But by the way, if, if you if you need time to uh, if you want to, uh, to 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 listen more and on this topic, and you, you we want to uh, uh, watch an, another uh, time the the the, 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 the talk, uh, I will be able uh, uh, and available by email. Uh, to, to exchange and, and, and discuss. Okay. Okay, so okay, thank Richard, you. Then I, think, I think we're done for the morning. You have a lunch uh, planned in the program. And yep. uh, everybody can write Guillem if it's necessary. Yeah. yeah so Thank you very much for Roberto to chairing the session. Thank you very much for Guillaume to do this very nice uh, talk. Thank you.